Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. I do appreciate it. Uh, look here, we got us another wax cover top bottle here. Uh, this is uh, Terrapin Beer Company. They're down in Georgia. This is their Mutella. So I don't know if they put any Nutella in there. That's how they're getting that combination for the name. Uh, this is their Chocolate Hazelnut Imperial Milk Stout. It's not a huge beer, but it is 8.5%, 8.5%. This was sent to me by my buddy and brother Rico, and uh, he, he sent this one back to me uh, in the end of December of 2017. Uh, it's got the vintage, it says 2017 reserve, so I don't know exactly when in the year that they. Uh, do this beer whether it's beginning of the year end of the year middle of the year. I'm not sure this has 2017 basically uh, For salaring purposes. That's probably all you need to know, but uh, here we are in 2019 February the 10th uh, I don't know when they produce in that year, so I don't know if it's two years old quite yet or not so uh, It is what it is, but at least we got that bit of information and he writes here uh he picked it up and it was around 11 bucks. Uh, commercial description an 8.5% ABV Imperial Milk Stout brewed with hazelnuts and chocolate from Olive and Sinclair in Nashville. It says their new stout uses an imperialized version of the Athens, Georgia based brewery's Muhu Chocolate Stout, a beer that was first released in 2010. And I have reviewed that one, guys. It is a very nice chocolatey beer. So let's see what this one is going to be like and uh, we will make a grade at the end of the video like we always do here. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. This is considered an English sweet slash milk style according to Beer Advocate and basically it's the same thing over on Untapped Chocolate Hazelnut Imperial Milk Style. So um, uh, milk style means that they've used lactose in the brewing which tends to, which is an unfermentable sugar which leads uh, it to be a little sweeter on the back end than ones that are not because uh, the yeast usually eats up all those sugars during the fermentation process where it cannot eat the lactose uh, so it, it's which makes it remain a little sweeter on the back end instead of dry or bitter so let's get my old knife out here and this wax looks very very thick on this bottle but we're going to give it a whirl here and hopefully we don't cut our fingers off trying to get the wax off of it so let me cut a ring on it so we can get the opener in there and maybe make a slice down the side of it so we can uh, peel this wax off of it yeah so much for that. The wax is sticking to the bottom. Yeah. It's on fairly tight, but I believe we got it. Uh, there's the out most of the outside ring. A little piece stayed on the bottle. Kind of stuck to the bottle here, guys. So let me make another cut down here on the side. And hopefully I won't cut any appendages <laughs> or fingers off during the process. There we go. 
Well, there's the, the cap there. So we'll set this there. And everybody knows I've told you a, a whole lot of times on these wax covered bottles. I am not a big fan of it. I think it's a useless process. It's to make the beer cost more. So, we've got the wax off. I believe we can get our opener on the cap. Nice little hiss. A little bit of smoke. And I think I got all the wax wiped off or we're not going to get any down in our glass. So here we go. We're going to do a fairly aggressive pour on this one, guys, and see what we end up with as far as the head. And I think this is a 500 milliliter bottle. We may be able to get most of it in the glass. Probably not on the original pour here, but we'll try to get the rest of it in there for a golf camera. Straight down the center, guys, about a quarter finger of head on that pour. Uh, it looks pretty dark, pitch black here, guys. Not getting any light through the beer. To the nose we go. Rich roasted malt. I'm getting some chocolate and hazelnuts in there. It smells very uh, sweet. Uh, a dessert beer, if you will. Maybe a little. A little of, uh, brown sugar and some toffee and caramel. Smells rather pleasant. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. That is definitely a dessert beer. You could, you could probably drink this for breakfast if you didn't have to go to work, being an eight and a half percenter, but. Uh, according to Untapped, they say this is 30 IBUs on this beer, which is relatively low. It is a very pleasant beer, guys. Uh, I don't think I've ever had any Nutella, uh, but I know what it's about, and this does have some nice nuttiness to it. It also has a nice sweetness and chocolate taste to it, so this is definitely a dessert beer. And as you can see, the head has dissipated completely. It is gone. So, let me throw the back end pour in here for a golf camera. I don't think it's going to change anything whatsoever. But, uh, I've had this beer. And not much in there. There's no sediment in the bottle. Everything came out. So, I've had this beer uh, a little over a year now, so uh, uh, seems like it's still probably just as tasty as it was when I got it. Of course, I only got one. Uh, I didn't do, uh, haven't done one before, so uh, pretty tasty beer, guys. It, it is a, a very nice, sweet dessert beer. So let me sip on this, let her taste it, and we'll come back and see what grade we're going to end up with. All right, guys, I'm back. I've been sipping on about 45 minutes to an hour very tasty beer guys it is a, a, a very sweet dessert beer chocolate hazelnuts very easy drinking alcohol seems to be very well hidden for an eight and a half percent uh it's a delicious dessert beer guys it really is uh it is uh, rather tasty uh Definitely couldn't drink more than one of these at a setting because it is just a little too, a little bit much on the sweet side. Like I said, like a candy bar in a glass. Uh, so let's do the final chug here on this one. Ah. Very pleasant, very pleasant, guys. Uh, maybe go against the grade on uh, on this one. On. I think it's rather tasty. Uh, it is what it says it is. Uh, I mean, I'm getting the hazelnuts. I'm getting the chocolate. Uh, hints of maybe a little brown sugar or molasses. And a nice, a very tasty dessert beer, guys. To me, I'm going to give it a minus 92 for me. Over to Beer Advocate, they have it at... 3.8 which is in their B plus range so that's what I'm saying uh, going against the grade I think it's a little tastier than what the guys are, are, are giving it uh, so uh, yeah but uh, yeah I can't think of a reason why it's exactly what it says it is on the label if you're expecting something else 
I don't know what, what you're reading because the label's telling you what it is. Uh, over to Beer Advocate, I mean, uh, uh, Untapped, they have it at 3.98, which is borderline of kicking down the door on the A minus. Uh, so, uh, both Beer Advocate and uh, Untapped has it at B plus, and I've got it at A minus. I think it's a little a little bit better than the B plus, uh, plus especially since it has the vintage on the label and the ABV on the label. Uh, thumbs up to those guys there. So with that being said, if you've had the Mutaba, and like I said, I don't know if, if it's a retired beer or, or if they're doing it every year with the same colored wax and just putting the different vintages on the label, I'm not sure. Uh, we used to get a lot of Terrapin beers here, and not so much anymore. Uh, I think they've either been bought out or the distribution has switched hands to somebody else. I didn't research that, guys. Uh, I was thinking Terrapin would, was bought out by somebody. But uh, anyway, that's where I'm putting it. So if you've had this, let me know what you think. Uh, this was the 2017 edition. Till we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge. <laughs>